If you're LS swapping your third gen Camaro or Firebird and you're wondering what to do about heater hoses, radiator hoses, or your throttle cable, this video is for you. Alright guys, so I didn't plan on doing this video. I've just been kind of blasting through with chaos theory here and trying to get everything buttoned up. Uh, but I, I had a few requests and I also saw some questions on one of the third gen swap pages. So I figured I'd just make this video, maybe help some people out who were wondering about this stuff and uh, to help one person out in particular. So here we go. We're going to start with the throttle cable. Now, I went with a low car throttle cable setup. The reason I went with this particular one is because Phil Bethauser, uh, you know, one of my subscribers and somebody I like to consider a friend now, uh, he actually sent me this cable back when this project first started. This cable is a universal cable, and I don't really recommend it for this specifically, but here's the part number. And this is a 48 inch low car universal cable. I think the U stands for universal. Now the reason I don't recommend it is because they make a LS swap specific cable. And the problem I had with this cable is it didn't have an end piece that fit into, uh, into the throttle body blade here or the throttle body actuator, whatever you want to call it. Now, it did have a piece that would have clipped on to, I believe it's for cruise control, this part here. And I could have used that instead of routing it the way I wanted to. But uh, what I decided to do is instead of using the piece that came with the cable, which was this guy right here. And as you can see, like I just said, um, well, I would clipped it on once before, but it will if you push hard enough. <laughs> It'll clip on here and it'll rotate and everything and you could actuate the throttle that way. Uh, instead, what I decided to do is go buy some of these guys at my local auto parts store. These are made by Dorman and these are uh, what's referred to as cable stops. So basically it's a little, a little lug that slides in into the little hole there on the side of the throttle body and you thread your cable through it and you run a, uh, a jam screw down inside there to hold the cable. This is the part number for these, and you can get them, like I said, it comes in a, a pack that comes with a bunch of different sizes. I use the smallest size. Uh, these are a, I think they're Dorman. I think they're made by Dorman. I'm not sure, but they're over in like the help section of your auto parts store. So uh, if you do, you know, if you're like me and you just happen to get a free universal cable you can use it guys by using those so i'll go ahead and tell you uh i'm not going to link this low car cable but in the description of this video i'm going to look up the ls swap specific low car cable 48 inch and that's what i'm going to put in the uh in the video description so you guys can click on that and buy you one if you want to go the same route that i did other than the end the different end that it comes with that clips into this um you know everything else is the same you know you just you hook it on either side of your throttle cable bracket it doesn't matter if you've got this engine or ls1 or whatever uh it's going to hook up the same where you're going to have to do the custom work is on the other side i'm not really going to take this apart and show you but you may recognize this this is the pass through that goes through your firewall and as you can see i've got the low car cable pushed into it here's all i did guys uh, i cut the stem off of this guy here this pass through and i just drilled it out i believe with a i think it was a quarter inch drill bit maybe a little bit larger but just enough so that this threaded part of the low car cable would push in but it would take some force to push it in there uh, that's all i did i just shoved that into the cable in there that should be the same on the ls1 style uh, low car cable and then once that goes in hard to see i'm trying my best but but there is a little black clip up there i don't know if you can see it or not but basically what it does is after you slide your cable through the top of your uh, gas pedal here 
that clip locks it into place so that if there's any slack or anything, it can't pop out. There's that plastic clip. Uh, like I said, it goes, it goes through there and then the plastic clip is gonna come back up and latches into the end here. I can't do it with one hand, <laughs> but it latches into the end of your, your pedal rod there and that's what kind of holds everything in place. I really wish I would have recorded it while I was doing it. But like I said, guys, I'm trying to get this car, uh, well, race ready. So I wasn't really recording, and then I had somebody that asked the question, so I figured I'd go back and try to explain it. I'm not gonna pull the cable comple completely back out of the car because it's kind of a, a bear. Basically, the clip that I just showed you on the firewall, it has a very similar setup to this where you have to push the two pins in and pop it out. And it is just a bear to get to up in there. You'll see what I'm talking about when you gotta pull your old one out. But you can see on this end, this was the factory V6 throttle cable. I just cut it off right there, which was about that far before that firewall passed through. Then I just took a pair of pliers. Uh, oh, well, I'm sorry. Then I clipped the cable on the other side of the pass through because I needed that little black piece that may or may not be on camera, but the piece I was just trying to show you. So I pulled that, uh, cut the other side, pulled that piece off. Then I just used my pliers to pull the sheathing out of that pass through and then enlarge the hole large enough for, as I just explained, the uh, uh, low car cables end to kind of shove into. But I wanted, honestly, I wanted to be able to have to thread it in, but I drilled it just a little bit too big for that. But it shoves in there. I've had the wife work the throttle a bunch of times and it doesn't seem to be popping out, so I think we're good. Then, once that was done, I routed the cable around the back of the car. I actually left a lot of slack in this cable and the reason I did that is because we are planning on doing a Holly High Ram intake setup later on this car and I wasn't sure how much cable I would need. I didn't want to have to buy a new cable when I do do that. so. I went ahead and left a lot of extra cable here so that I, you know I could be sure to have enough when we do the Holly High Ram. But uh, basically, I run this up and it's not hooked up under there right now, is why there's so much slack. But I just ran it around and I used one of those cable ends I showed you to cut it to the right length. Now, I want to say this we had an issue when I first did this where my wife floored it real fast and the cable popped out of the end. So I adjusted this back because I'd already cut the cable. I adjusted this back as far as I could to try to put more slack in here. But I believe the issue that I'm having is the throttle blade is going wide open before the pedal hits the floor. So what I may need to do is bend the arm on the top of the pedal to put a little more slack into this, into this cable here, which means there'll be a little slop when you first start to push the pedal down. But ideally, what you want to happen is you want the pedal to bottom out on the floor at the as close to the exact same time as possible that your throttle blade goes into the fully open position. If you can achieve that, then you're good to go. But if the pedal hits the floor before the throttle blade goes wide open, then you're not going to get wide open throttle. If the throttle blade goes wide open before the pedal hits the floor, then you're gonna put a lot of stress on the end of the cable and risk breaking your cable. So, so basically what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take your low car throttle cable here, take everything loose from that end of it, take everything loose from this end of it, pull the cable all the way back through this sheath, then you slide on your little black clip that clips onto the, uh, the pedal arm there. Then you shove the low car, the end, into the firewall pass-through. Then you shove your cable back up through, through that pass-through, through this sheath, all the way up to here. And then that's when you attach your little nut here. After you've measured your cable to make sure it'll reach, of course, then you just pull this up, bring your cable through here. Come on now. Around like that. I don't know if you can even see me on camera, but hopefully you know what's going on. I'm just shoving that that uh, wire nut into the little slot there, or trying to. And then you release it. I didn't get it all in. I'm going to have to push it in with a pair of pliers, but you get the picture. 
there we go there we go now it's on there didn't need pliers just needed some finesse but there you go guys that's how i did the throttle cable now let's move on to the hoses now heater hoses guys these are the exact same heater hoses that you see me use on every swap that i have done on this channel to date okay so your big uh five eighths or i'm sorry your big three quarter hose here's the part number these are both daco hoses it is eight zero four one seven link will be in the description of this video and then your smaller five eighths hose here is part number eight zero four oh seven now they make a shorter version of these hoses they're only a couple dollars cheaper um, basically all you do is you replace the sevens in each of these part numbers with a six and that's going to be the shorter hose i like to buy the longer hose because like i said it's only a couple dollars cheaper you're talking about 13 or i mean you know yeah 13 dollars as opposed to like 11 dollars and i'd rather have a hose that's too long than too short you guys know what i'm saying anyhow i want to clarify in case questions come up later so these hoses have a 90 degree bend in the end of them here and that works out perfect in damn near every swap for routing these hoses because you've got the 90 degree bend you just slip your hoses on you saw we use these in the nova we used them in the c10 we use these on everything guys but you just slip your hoses on with the 90 degree bends they go straight back to the heater core in my and, and again guys that'll work fine if you're doing a traditional swap on on one of these uh third gen camaros or firebirds in my case i'm gonna have to do something a little different that's why i wanted to cover it in case you guys see this in a future video and you're like well that's not how you showed us to run them guys because i'm using the up and forward ebay turbo headers i'm not going to be able to run them directly to the heater core so what i'm going to have to do is i'm actually going to put the 90 degree ends back here and then i'm going to be bringing my hoses around like this up over the shock shock tower there and they're going to be dipping under my forward facing headers and going into the water pump but there you go guys the heater hoses like I said, it's the same heater hoses that you've seen me use on every single swap on this channel. They always work. I haven't found a situation yet where they don't. Moving on to the radiator hoses. This seems to be a huge thing because when I was searching for radiator hoses, there was just so many conflicting, I don't know, man, like everybody was saying to use something different. Now, keep in mind, I am using the stock third gen uh, radiator so my outlet is over there or I should say now my inlet is over there my outlet is down here if you've got an LS swapped radiator then the top hose is not going to apply to you the bottom hose sh should still apply to you but your top hose will be going over here you're gonna have to use something different maybe like the hose that you saw me use on the DR Nova you can go check out that playlist and you know get the part number for that hose but in my case i did what i always do ladies and gentlemen uh, i took me a piece of coat hanger and i bent it in the shape i needed i went to my local auto zone went behind the counter and i found a top hose that fit just about perfect all i had to do was cut about an inch off this end to bring the hose in closer where it would sit in the factory retainer there and again this is with the third gen radiator uh, and a corvette slash camaro style water pump actually yeah i mean it should still work i've got the spacers uh you'll remember those from the video where we did our alternator only setup but even without those spacers this hose should still work just fine for you and again, these are Daco hoses, and the part number is 71994. Guys, again, I'm going to post an eBay link to all this stuff in the video description. I recommend picking it up on eBay because if you've got the time to wait on it, you're going to get it a lot cheaper than you did at your store, your local store most of the time. Oh, for the bottom hose, this is where it gets kind of tricky. 
you have your uh, your little arm bracket here, your idler arm bracket, and it's got bolts that stick out of it. So we needed a hose that would kind of hump over that and then go to the radiator and go up here. Now, this actually wasn't that hard. What I did, again, with the coat hanger, I bent it and shaped it. It is just barely touching that just a little bit. What I'm planning to do is just put me, uh, like wrap me a piece of aluminum, like sheet aluminum around it and clamp it down just to protect it a little bit. Now I've got these polyurethane mounts, so my engine's not gonna move much. If you're using rubber mounts, your engine's gonna move a whole lot. So you're definitely gonna wanna protect that hose from abrading on that. But other than that, it's good to go. And if I'm being honest here, if I would have trimmed a little more off this end and a little less off this end, it would have shifted the whole hose this way and it probably would have cleared that a little better. But there's a reason I didn't do that. And that's because this was actually the second one of these hoses that I bought. Here you can see the part number. Again, Deco Hose 71321. I bought two of them, guys. <laughs> and the first one, I cut off too damn short down here. So I ended up having to go buy another hose. But the reason I cut it off so short is because this end of the hose actually blows up to a larger size and it starts to taper down right about here. If you're looking at it like this, this is the bottom. Um, I'm trying to put this in where you can kind of see. You see it starts to taper down about right there. Now, where I ended up cutting it was a little bit before it got down to the actual size I needed, but I cut the, I, I, I took a big hack on the first hose I bought and you know then I realized it was too much so I bought another hose and I just whittled it away about a half inch at a time until I got to where I thought it was good um, and then once I thought it was good I went ahead and cut this end uh, looking back and this is my advice to you um, wait to cut this end until you get this end shoved up far enough that it is not touching your uh, idler arm mount here. That way, you know, like I said, cause if I could have moved it forward just a little bit more then look, I mean, there's like a half inch of clearance there. So that's my advice to you guys. Just uh, pay attention when you're trimming and I might actually be able to get away with taking a little more off this and, and shoving it forward and taking care of that problem too. But that's it guys. Uh, that's your heater hoses, your radiator hose upper and lower. And that's how I did my throttle cable. Uh, I know some people are like doing a hybrid of their factory cable and like a fourth gen cable or Silverado cable or a van. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. Uh, this way was super easy. I mean, it really was guys. It took me, like it took me longer to get the old cable out than it took me to put this together and get the new one in. I'll just say that. I mean, it was, it was that easy. But that's my advice for you guys. I hope this video helps you out. You know who you are, uh, the ones that were asking for this. So uh, share this if you guys know anybody that you think it might help. Once again, thanks for watching. If you wanna see how I did anything else on this car, check out the Chaos Theory Camaro playlist on the channel. Now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.